it for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is our time No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line can hold it down shout out to my man sammy got it off the ground and to all the listeners tuned in right now got debates analysis and speculation this is sports talk for the new generation you know where to find us got a reputation sick podcast your number one sports destination giving all our devotion riding high on this wave of emotion going all out yeah because this is our time no, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sing, sing. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sing, sing. S-I-C-K is the sick for the audio or you can even watch back giving players all the props or put them on blast we don't give no hot takes only talk back s-i-c-k 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 For the audio, or you can even watch back, giving players all the props, or put them on blast. We don't give no hot takes, only talk facts. We're giving all our devotion, riding high on this wave of emotion, going all out, yeah, cause this is our time. No, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. can hold it down shout out to my man sammy got it off the ground and to all the listeners tuned in right now got debates analysis and speculation this is sports talk for the new generation you know where to find us got a reputation sick podcast your number one sports destination We're giving all our devotion riding high on this wave of emotion going all out yeah because this is our time no, we no stopping us till we reach the finish line. All in, we came in a win. We're gonna give everything. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sing, sing. On fire, we're ready to fight. We'll bring the house down tonight. S-I-C-K on the run. S-I-C-K sing, sing. S-I-C-K is the sick for the audio or you can even watch back giving players all the props or put them on blast we don't give no hot takes only talk back s-i-c-k s-i-c-k turn up your volume because you're about to listen to the sick podcast with Tony Maradero. 55 seconds left in the penalty, a minute and 27 seconds left in regulation time. Boston 4, Montreal 3. 
Lafleur coming out rather gingerly on the right side. He gives it into Lemaire back to Lafleur. Oh! The sickest Montreal Canadiens podcast. <laughs> you know, I, 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 You're in the oh! sports entertainment like no other. Rejoint, on lui fait perdre la rondelle une passe devant. Et c'est bon. Ce sera la victoire des Canadiens. Stanley pour les Canadiens. Le 23e de l'histoire. You found the dogs. John, you found the dogs. He found the dogs. And all together, they worked the young team to the top. And now, a 24th Stanley Cup banner will hang from the rafters of the famous forum in Montreal. The Canadians win the Stanley Cup. Brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground. Your premier gaming destination. It's gonna be sick. Marinero, the sick podcast on this Wednesday, September 13 is how is and how is everyone doing? I don't even know if I remember how to do this. So I'm going to try the sick podcast brought to you by Energy Transportation Group, named by the Financial Times as one of America's fastest growing companies in 2023, recognized by the Globe and Mail as a top growing Canadian company for two years in a row. They work with some of the biggest Fortune 500 companies providing end-to-end logistics services. Join a winning team and check out Energy's career page for available opportunities. Also brought to you by Playground. Experience the world-renowned poker experience with free food and drinks at their cash game tables. A bad beat jackpot that is already over $700,000 after the world record setting amount of $2,590,000 was won on August 2nd. Weekly promotions, daily tournaments, and unmatched customer service. Why go anywhere else? Located just over the Mercier Bridge. Only minutes from downtown Montreal Playground and... Brought to you by La Bit at TV, brewed in Quebec, a winner of a dozen international awards. La Bit at TV offers quality microbrewery beers with premium ingredients for everyone's taste. La Bit at TV, embrace your true nature. So a couple of nights ago, it was the Montreal Canadiens golf tournament on Monday, September 11th at the Club de Golf Laval sur le Lac. And uh, that was Monday morning with a tee off scheduled at around just over 10 a.m. for the players invitees, partners, sponsors, etc. And uh, on Monday night, Matt O'Hayan brought you the sick podcast with Eric Engels, who's normally a contributor, was all of last season, mostly on Monday nights. And Matt O'Hayan uh, brought you the sick podcast on Tuesday night with Stu Cowan of the Montreal Gazette and HockeyInsideOut.com. So uh, I've been hearing that a lot of people were on the um, on the yet on the YouTube um, messaging. S- excuse me. Um, I don't know if that aired or not, but anyway, it's okay. It happens. I sneezed. All right. So uh, I've been hearing that a lot of people were messaging. What's going on with Tony? Is Tony gone? Did Tony leave the sick podcast? Was Tony fired? So Tony's here live from Portugal to tell you. And I thought I had told most of you this already. Tony's on vacation. If you've been following me via social media or you've been listening to me on uh, BPM Sport Radio, I've been mentioning that I am in Portugal. Um, and so I, I, you know, we brought you the podcast without no interruption whatsoever. Uh, there's a lot of people in the podcast world and I don't judge any uh, or anybody. Uh, they took August off, they took July off, they, tuned, they took June off as soon as the nice weather came around and uh, they either vacationed or uh, took up a hobby or whatever, they decide to take the summer off and then they're back when the golf tournament starts or when the preseason starts. Well, we didn't do that. We went straight and next year we will, I think, uh, because I, I, I need a vacation. But um, we went straight. And um, so uh, I am still in Portugal. And I am checking in to tell you that uh, Tony Marinero did not quit the sick podcast and Tony Marinero did not get fired from the sick podcast. As a matter of fact, uh, Tony Marinero and sick media uh, have been in talks uh, uh, to sign what will be a very, very, very long term deal. um, The longest contract of my life, um, which, um, you know. It wouldn't take much because I never really had a long contract. I had a one-year deal in year one, and that was about it. And then I had to prove myself. 
every day. And I did that for about 20 years. I think I did. And here I am. So, um, so here it is. Uh, I've been in Portugal since uh, I left Montreal on Saturday, August 26th. I arrived the next day on Sunday, August 27th. Uh, my son is playing soccer here. He hasn't played his first official game yet. He's in a U19 league in Portugal. And uh, I, I came here to help him settle in. And I came here to help him adapt and, uh, and uh, cater to his needs. And if he needs anything and uh, provide some support. And uh, if all goes well, if all goes well, uh, he could end up playing his first game on Saturday. And, uh, and then I'll be back the following day. I'll be back on Sunday. So, um, so it'll be three weeks then. When I come back on Sunday, it'll be three weeks I was away. And uh, to make sure that we continue to provide content, before I left, I recorded, I think, 14 or 15 podcasts. And I did that in like four or five days. Uh, they were all topics that were not going to be outdated. And uh, we also did it knowing that if something was going to change from the recording and the topic and there was going to be a trade or there was going to be an acquisition or something was going to happen, we were willing to scrap the podcast and not play it. And uh, we were able to pull it off pretty well. So uh, once again, I want to thank Matt O'Han who uh, filled in for the last couple of days. And I'm back to tell you that uh, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be around uh, on the SICK podcast for a very, very long time, help permitting, knock on wood. And uh, with that said, without further ado, uh, he was my regular collaborator throughout all of last hockey season from TV Aspar, Matt Andre Perot. What's going on? How are you, beautiful? Hey, I'm doing very, very well. Yeah, uh, Portugal. Uh, should I call you beautiful you back? Or, well, uh, yeah. that's what I was hoping for, but yeah. I'm, I'm, listen, I'm, I, I have the laptop and I have the microphone, which is not the, the microphone I have set up in my, uh, in my podcast studio at home. Obviously, the lighting is different. This is just regular lighting in the room and I have LED lights. The background, as you can tell, is not the same. So it's, it's, it feels like a little, it feels a little bit weird. There's a little bit of a spray on the air. But uh, in talking with Agnello earlier today, he's like, Tony, you should see the people on YouTube and they think you left and they think you quit and they think you that. So I said, okay, you know what? I said, I'm, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to be on tonight. Now, once again, full go. disclosure, uh, this is at the time of the recording, because this is going to air at 10 PM Eastern time. And 10 p.m. Eastern time on a Wednesday night would be 3 a.m. on a Thursday morning in Portugal. So uh, I am not live right now. I am recording. Uh, but right now, uh, it, it's just a couple of, of hours earlier that I'm recording than, than normal. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty late here. It's very, very late as a matter of fact. But hey. I wanted to check in because I said, no, no, we got to put a stop to that. I don't want people thinking that. And I thought everyone knew that I was away, but clearly everyone didn't. And now everyone does back on Monday. Let's get it out of the way. Okay. Um, Canadians golf tournament. I'm, yes. I'm, 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 I'm saddened that I missed it to tell you the truth, because there is nice. Um, it's, it's always good to be there. You, you know, you see faces that you don't see for, you know, since the end of the last hockey season, for the most part. And there's so many storylines yeah. uh, that come about. And for me, one of the things I take out of the uh, the golf tournament is the message could not be more clear. Everyone uh, is on the same page. Well, I, I can't wait to hear what you have to say, but correct me yeah. if I'm wrong. But Jeff Molson, Jeff Gorton, Kent Hughes, and Marty St. Louis – we're all singing the same tune. I think St. Louis was maybe a little bit more, we're going to really compete and try and win and all that stuff. But correct me if I'm wrong, were everyone not on the page of? Yeah. We're not mm -hmm. going to say the P word. But you know what? The goal is to get better as a group, to get better as a team, to get better individually, to get better every day. To me, the message is clear. Well, let's say it's clear that it's not crystal clear. Yeah, and it's a moment. if if I'm like as a journalist or I mean I, I don't care and I I kind of buy that the fact that you know it, that there's no 
timeline exactly because you know you never know injuries and uh, how your young prospect will you know will improve their games compared to last year and new hook kirby doc all these guys but yeah if i'm a fan i'm starting to be like okay but when when you know when is the 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 goal is going to be like playoffs and you know do damage uh, like uh, marie bergeron was uh, was saying back in the days so if i'm a fan i i understand and i i get it i i get it it's not a uh, it's not science it's not exact but you know i i i can't understand fans to be like okay but when when can we expect to have you know a run or anything because the last two years it's i mean it's it's rare that you see fans happy with losses you don't see that often no and well i mean you see it's that not, often. It's, it's it's not in the culture of north american sports probably not in the culture not, of, of, of any sport really no, uh, or and anywhere I, and i think hockey fans they get it like you have to be very bad before being very good and they, they get it but that's when? the formula that's the formula right now i mean unless you're look uh, i think what Go vegas did was it was pretty spectacular you know an expansion team was. And six years later they won the stanley cup if you think about it's it crazy yeah vegas inherited uh, i you know either call them rejects if you want but rejects is a big word but they inherited Once. They were inherited players that were not considered to be core players of other teams, mm -hmm. far from being core players because teams could protect, what is it, uh, three forwards and five, uh, th no, three defensemen and five forwards and a goalie or whatever the rules was at that time. So you, yeah. you're not you're not basically getting the top seven or eight players from any team, and they went on to win the Stanley Cup. That's pretty remarkable. Yeah, but it, it shows that people, there's no direct formula. So yeah, like, no. So there is no direct formula, but for the most part, I think if you take a look at the different formulas, I think across the National Hockey League, most executives seem to think oh, that course. you have to be bad before you can be good and so being yeah. bad means that you'll have higher probabilities of drafting one two three four five six and of course when you draft one two three four five six there's higher probabilities that you're getting a better player than drafting out of the top 10 out of the top 15 mm -hmm. out of the top 20 and because free agency is what it is and for the most part now you're getting older players or you're getting players that have overpriced themselves you're, you're probably getting bad contracts. I think for the most part, people seem to think that, you know, you have to do it through a rebuild. It doesn't yeah. work for every team. Yeah. But there are a lot and, of teams that won the Stanley Cup that ended up going through a rebuild. And and trust me, I I, I agree with the, with the plan. But can you imagine how good of, of a seller is Kent Hughes, Jeff Gordon, and Marty St. Louis? It, in, in Montreal, like, it, it's... Have you ever seen, like, no expectations like that i mean uh, results wise in montreal probably, probably probably not but there's years there was years in the um mid to late 90s that the montreal canadians were a terrible yeah. franchise they told everyone that the goal was to win the stanley cup yeah and, and they were awful exactly. and and you know what people were still cheering and anyway, i mean at the end of the day what's going to happen here are, are less people going to go to the games? No. As a matter of fact, they've raised their ticket prices, probably raised them more so than anyone in the league. I mean, earlier today... That's not what Molson page, said. Well, if you take a look at prime games for the Canadians, yeah. compared to other teams playing the same opponents the Canadians would play, I think the Canadians prices and tickets have gone up more than most other teams in the national hockey league let's say they're like yeah they're in a good position when it comes to raise the ticket prices but again it's i, I totally understand it i get it and i think the strategy is the the good one and it's year number one of like the results of the plan of gordon and use plan to me so I, I, I can't wait to see where this team is. What, what do you mean by that year number one in terms of 
this is the year now where they should be turning the corner where we exactly see if exactly. there's an improvement like we'll see if like few players if they you know if they improve and if, if we can see like a uh you know if 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 we can see the, the the potential they have how high is the potential so to me it's like and i have to say i i stole that idea from renault my friend renault he, he was okay. saying this this is year one of uh like the results of the play it's, it's the so, turning the corner year it's the turning exactly. the corner year and yeah. and look i i think you're gonna see it right away in terms of um a couple of years ago they finished last overall in the league and last year they finished fifth last mm -hmm. and this year i don't think they're going to finish last or second last or third last or fourth last or fifth last fourth, no they might but finish 10th last so if they finish 10th last they have turned the corner and you will see Did that they? finishing 10th last well finishing 10th last instead of finishing fifth last it's a big improvement is it not i mean we we, we could debate that but to me if i mean you have to like fight hard and late for a playoff spot if you don't make it to me it's it, that's i mean it's the key it's the minimum the floor but yeah i mean but again teams... what is it like according to what we've heard monday at the golf tournament what is it yeah but if you finish let's say 10th to 12th last so you finished 2021 out of 32 teams yeah realistically you're probably i don't have it in front of me but you're probably if you're finishing 2021 you're probably finishing one win less per month of making the playoffs sounds sounds accurate yeah right i think yeah. i don't have this like i don't have the standings in front of me i never really did the math but look i think i think they're going to improve uh i heard a lot of things at that press conference that i really liked I heard yeah. Jeff Molson not shy to say the rebuild word. Jeff Molson yeah. admitting that for a very long time they were reluctant to do a rebuild. He was worried about it. He was scared about it. Jeff Gordon obviously talked them into it and sold him on the idea. Gordon and Hughes were on the same page. I'm happy to hear that even though there are some members of the media who are clamoring for they can't be rebuilding anymore. Let's go where they got to make it to the playoffs. They could have easily said that. No, they came out and they said, yeah. we're going to, it's, you know what? We're, we're not going to talk about the playoffs. The goal is getting better every day. They didn't succumb to media pressure. There's been plenty other management groups in the past that have succumbed to media pressure. Uh, I love Marty St. Louis. What do you have to say about Slavkowski? Yeah, we're going to continue his development, but we're not going to try and kill his passion. Exactly. I love the press conference. But, I mean, yeah, I, I did. And as long as the message is going to be accepted by the fans, keep on saying it, like keep on saying we want to see improvement. OK, but what is improvement means? Like, uh, is it playoffs? Oh, we, we're you know, we'll see. But we just need improvement as long as this message is accepted by the fan base. I mean, keep on using it. It's, it's... why would I, I see? I don't get. I understand members of the media uh, wanting to the rebuild to end because you know, if members of the media all say that they're in full accordance with the rebuild, there's not much to talk about. So you're always going to have several say, no, 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 they need to win. So it'll give them something to talk about. It'll give them something mm -hmm. to write about. It'll give them something to say on television. And let's face it nobody likes to cover a team that ends up losing most of their games uh, trust me it is uh, not the funniest thing in the world and you know yeah. i don't and I don't numbers go it, numbers go down on television numbers that's go a down fact. on radio restaurants lord, everything everywhere yeah, yeah mean, thank the lord they keep on increasing on this podcast but at the same time right so when we work in the media and we see that numbers are going down we get a little bit antsy too, right? Our jobs yeah, on the but, line and our futures on the I line. I mean, hold on head. a second, Tony. I, I I don't know any journalist who has the this thinking. I mean, it's I mean, I I don't have it. I mean, I couldn't care less if they if I mean I couldn't care less if they win like fifty games or twenty five because it doesn't make a difference to me, my life. But I I mean it's 
it's obviously more fun to cover a winning team because you know mm -hmm. the guys are smiling and it's and yeah. people are are you know are in a good mood good vibe around you know in the in the province so just to be clear it's it, it but as a journalist it, it doesn't change anything and it it, it, it it has to not change you understand yeah like you you can't um take uh like position because of the ratings or whatever it's it doesn't work like that but no, I, I, mean, think I get do. it i think some do but i listen i'll say this if i'm a fan if i'm a fan they didn't do a rebuild from you know from 94 yeah to 2021 when they went to the stanley cup final yeah there has never been a rebuild. Now, folks can say whatever they want. They were sucked from this year to that year. They were terrible. This organization, prior to Jeff Gordon coming here, mm -hmm. never said we are doing a rebuild. Not from 1994 to 2021. As a matter of 2021, it's, it's once the way again, to go now. under Mark Bergevin, they went to the Stanley Cup final. And then, unfortunately, it wasn't sustainable. There were injuries uh, to Weber, Carey Price. We know what happened. Uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, of course there were other injuries on the team and then, um, you know, Phil Deneau went to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. It wasn't sustainable. Mark Bergevin went all in. It wasn't sustainable. And then everything, you know, like just came down like a, like a house of cards. So if I'm a fan and they've been trying to patch from 1994 to 2021 and the best that they gave them was a Stanley Cup final in a COVID year where if it wasn't a COVID year, they wouldn't even have enough points to get into the playoffs. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. It was fair for everyone. No, no, but I mean, I, it, <laughs> I, I didn't say that it was. Just, I was just, I was just yeah, stating just, facts, of course. I was, I was just, just stating facts. You. I'm just hey, you. Hey, I, you know. I, would have, I would have loved for them to win it. I would have made $2,200 if they would have because I had put – Oh yeah, uh, uh, twenty one or twenty two hundred. I had put in, for whatever reason. I think I had ninety dollars left in my account, and I put ninety dollars on the Montreal Canadiens to win the Stanley Cup. That I think they were going to win the Stanley Cup. Obviously not. I just thought that they had a deep team. It was a COVID year. Anything can happen. Yeah, I thought they were deep. Uh, I, I like their top four on defense. I knew the referees were going to put their whistles away and weren't going to call penalties. Uh, and uh, you know what? So I said, yeah, let me, uh, uh, they, they, let me go for it. Uh, well, let's see what happens. And uh, dummy me, I, I didn't hedge my bet in the final. And I mean, then, that, that's okay. That's okay. I, was, I mean, it was, I was good. It even was though good. I knew, and even though I knew Tampa Bay, I just, <laughs> with the type of show that I was doing, I felt if I ever talked about it, that I would have hedged my bet because I thought Tampa Bay was going to win the cup. It was going to take away from well, all the excitement. So I said, you know what? Let's can, just let it ride. Can you imagine Montreal wins and for the rest of your life, you can brag the fact that you called yeah. it. So it would yeah. have been great. But, you know, the uh, first period of that that final, they, Montreal was dominating, but they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't score. So after that, yeah. you, you, you're cooked. But let me just finish by saying that Tell I me. understand the strategy of, the organization jeff gorton is a great seller and he's a great great guy like very nice person to speak with very polite yeah he's Can't even, got the, he's for... even got the francophones in the palm of his hand now. yeah a exactly of, okay yeah, a couple, I... couple of more francais and yeah, it, was, uh... it was my question so i, I was yeah. kind of uh, what did you ask him? Asked, i i just said uh because he talked about the the p word the playoffs so i said what about the the b word like for birdies because it was actually you know it, it was obviously a golf day so he talked about the birdies and then he said the french he said like i took more french lesson than uh, golf, golf lessons, lessons. So i said yeah, okay yeah. well can is there anything and then he started to speak in french so then after his his uh, press conference he did a, a live with uh, renault lavoie on tva sports and so then I go and see Jeff Gordon and I'm like, Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't want to put you on the spot, but you did great. And he was, no, no, it's perfect. I wanted to practice it and very nice, you know, very genuine, very smiling. He's a good so, man. He's a good man. yeah. So and to me, he's a great seller, a great person. And to me, Kent Hughes is, is, uh, I, 
I don't want to use the word genius, but I'll use it. To me, so far, he, he's acting like a genius. Every trade, every, everything he's doing is the I, good I, thing to do. I love the asset management. Like yeah. For me, I have nicknamed Kent Hughes the stockbroker. He okay. is like a guy who's buy, buy low, spots. sell high, or sell high, buy low, he's, whatever. He's like a guy who's following, like, like following the stock market 24 hours a day. And if he can sell one stock yeah. to buy two stocks, sell two stocks to buy three mm -hmm. stocks, that's what he's doing with asset management. It's exactly what he, he's doing. He's playing the he stock market so game. Yeah. Instead of playing it with companies, he's playing it with hockey players. Yeah, he's uh, he, he like, and he is so focused with his plan and to me that's the best thing for like if i'm a fan i'm happy to know that it's not going to be emotional decision the, i think we talked about it in a previous podcast the, the only maybe emotional decision or you know it was tainted a little bit is with jeff petrie because you know he wanted to accommodate him and yeah he did so but that's if not, he's so focused. And I don't think right. that was an emotional. I'm not so sure that was an emotional decision, though. That was no. I'm, I mean, let me kind call that, of. Okay, let me call that an investment. Let me explain. His investment was, I'm going to do this. I'm going to make a player happy, even though the player was thrilled to leave Montreal and um, talked about the winning environment and all that stuff when he got to Pittsburgh. Oh, the second I got here, you can tell the winning environment. Yeah, yeah. You know, whatever. I thought that was very unnecessary. Even if it was true, uh, I thought it was unnecessary uh, considering that, uh, you know, they, um, they gave him his wish and they traded him to an American team. But the investment in terms of, we know that it's going to be hard for the Canadians to sign free agents. We know that mm -hmm. Montreal is not the number one destination for free agents. He's trying his very best with the tools that he has to show class. Because right. when you're a classy organization or you're a classy person, there's word of mouth that happens. People mm -hmm. talk about you. Hey, that guy, classy guy. Hey, that company, classy company. This is the way they treat their employees. This is the way that guy treated his employees. That's what <coughs> it was. The whole Petrie thing was an investment. Yep. Yeah, that's what it was. Right. Carry right. Price. Speaking of yep. uh, Petrie, it seems like when we uh, mentioned the uh, Petrie family name, we soon after mentioned the Price family name for several yep. reasons. Uh, Carry Price. We've heard from him over the last couple of days saying that it, it's, it's hard to imagine thinking of playing again considering that if he goes to play a game of softball, mm -hmm. he's hurting for the rest of the week. He, he won't play again. We, 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 you know, it's, that's, I that's think you, I, I think you, you have to be pretty naive if you didn't come to that conclusion by now. I think, uh, you know, I mean, like several of us caught that. on, we, you, you know, you saw his last game, when yeah. he was looking yeah. for his family in the stands, he yeah. actually turned around while the yeah, game was going on. Video, yeah, yeah. He turned that was my uh, my was video. Yeah. To, 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 to say hi to his Wave family. Wave at the kids, yeah. That was the, this is my last hurrah. That was it. He won't play again. That that That's a fact. And uh, I mean, yeah, I, I hope, hopefully, hopefully his contract will be traded. Hopefully, and I, I think it would. I, I heard why, you on the you radio. Say, why say, yeah, why do you say hopefully? You don't think it will? All oh, because it's not that much of a difference from the actual amount over the next couple of years. Is that it? Of course, yeah. But yeah, yeah I, I heard. I think it was you on BPM Spa saying that. Yeah. yeah, maybe some people will think it's a it's a lack of respect if we trade him. Or whoa, I mean, the guy won't play again. It's it's only like numbers, like. No, no, that's all that. That's what I was asked. I was asked by by on on, on George Larac and Stefan Gonzalez's show. I was asked, "Do you think like are you good with Carey Price being traded, or is Carey Price the kind of guy you don't trade?" And I said, the "Kind of guy you don't trade." I mean, Wayne Gretzky was traded, right? So yeah. anyone could be traded. And look, 
I have a lot of respect for Carey Price's career. I mean, I'm not so do I. For a decade, he was among the top goalies in the National Hockey League, if not the best one. We agree on that. Now, I am a guy that gets a little bit less excited from goalies than I do from forwards. I just, ever since I was a kid, my hockey idols were offensive players. Mm -hmm. For the Canadians, it was Guy Lafleur. Then after Lafleur, for a short period of time, it was Mats Naslin. And then after Mats Naslin, it was Stéphane Richet. And I would say in the last uh, 10, 15 years or so, the player that most excited me with the Canadians was Kovalev. By the and, way, you uh, look a little bit like uh, Louis Robitaille. I look like Louis Robitaille? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Wow, Louis Robitaille must be a very good-looking guy. Well, you know, it, uh, now coach of Cap Breton Eagles. Yes, yes, the Cape Breton Eagles, of course. Yeah. And um, and so... But anyways, but, <laughs> but all, I was get, all I was getting at is the National Hockey League has changed. There's a salary cap now. Exactly. Some teams are above the floor. Some teams are below the floor. You have to hit the floor. If there's a team that has to hit the floor, they're going to trade for Carey Price and take on that contract. It's that simple. I don't read anything into it at all, at all, at all. And if anyone wants to like just read anything into it about, oh my God, you can't change Carey no, Price. No, no. I mean, I'm you're not a, you're not a Montreal okay. fan. Okay, we might be here. Here we might have a really good discussion. I'm convinced Carey Price wanted to pursue his career with the Seattle Kraken at one point. I mean, I am not shocked by what you're seeing right now. Because mm -hmm. um, we want to protect Jake Allen thing. I didn't buy it. To me, it was like, like, like find something better, please. Okay. Yeah, for, for those who had just forgot what we're talking about, it was the expansion draft. It was the uh, it was the um, expansion draft. Yeah. Seattle Kraken. Once again, you have to protect X amount of players. You have to protect one goalie. And Carey Price went to management and said, "Hey, uh, protect Jake Allen because if you protect me, Allen will get picked up. Yeah. And if you protect Jake Allen, chances are I will not get picked up. And uh, and the Canadians protected Jake Allen." Mm -hmm. And the Seattle Kraken did not select Carey Price yeah. based on his age and injuries at the time and his salary, of course. Mm -hmm. They well, didn't want to yes. go in that direction. But I say this. Anyone who says, protect the other guy, leave me available, they're not going to take me. If there's a 1% chance that the other team is going to take you, it's because you are prepared to leave in the in the, in, in the eventuality well, that you get picked up. So there, there are two options, uh, Tony. Like yeah. th that's that's the first the first option is that he he was willing to go to Seattle, and but second option is that geographically Mon convenient, of course. If you take a look at where Angela comes from and where he comes from, yeah, exactly. Yes, it probably of course, can be more convenient geographically. Than that. It's it, but maybe. Seattle and Montreal knew that the knee was a big problem. So, yeah, no, I hear you. I hear you. Anyway, but we all know what happened. He didn't but get the let, let's say we agree on the fact that Kerry wouldn't have taken the plane crying leaving yeah. to Seattle. No, I don't think so at all. Um, do you think his contract will be picked up by another team? I I hope. For Montreal, and if it can help, like the salary cap, even one dollar, I mean, do it. And I hope, yeah. I hope Kent Hughes will find a way. And it, yeah, it's it's like it's the best. It's such a it's such a, a great tool for rich teams. Like compared yeah. to let's say Arizona, who wants to get to the floor. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's an advantage that teams like Montreal have so if you can use it like do it now yesterday 
A shout out to Murphy Clinic, an aesthetic clinic specializing in medical aesthetic care. They offer permanent laser hair removal, as well as a wide range of treatments for skin problems such as acne, rosacea, fine lines, and more. They currently have two clinics, one located in Montreal, Shop Angus, and the second on the North Shore in Terrebonne. They're also opening soon in Quebec City. Visit murphyclinic.ca or on Instagram at Murphy Clinic. All right, a couple of days ago on Spitting Chicklets, Paul Bissonnet goes yeah. out and says... You know what Mike Babcock is doing with the Columbus Blue Jackets? He's going through players' phones. And he did it to the captain of the team, Boone Jenner. Babcock's done this stuff before. He's doing it again. It's awful. And it's out there. And it spreads like wildfire all over social media. Mm Mm-hmm. The nat, you know, the Aaron Portsline, who covers the Columbus Blue Jackets for the Athletics, as the National Hockey League and the Columbus Blue Jackets, everyone is aware of the allegations, and there's going to be an investigation, and everyone's looking into it. Shortly thereafter, the Columbus Blue Jackets, uh, Mike Babcock and Boone Jenner, issue a statement saying that you know what it was, it was all very innocent. They were trying to get to know each other, and. Babcock asked mm-hmm. Jenner for pictures from his family and of his family, and he showed him pictures of his family. And Babcock explained it as, uh, you know, they're 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 you know, they're trying to take communication to another level within the team, and they're trying to create this family atmosphere, all that stuff that's come out. Mm-hmm. And when I heard this, I wasn't surprised. I also went on radio and I said, I'm not surprised by this. And for me, Mike Babcock is old school. If I was the Columbus Blue Jackets, I wouldn't have hired him. I think it's time to start moving on to new school of NHL coaches. Uh, and uh, I, I gave it to Babcock pretty good. I've had a chance to think about it. Because, you know, sometimes when you're asked for something fresh, when it happens, yeah. you just go off the top of your head. And when you take a chance to actually sit back and think. And I'm trying to visualize... Mike Babcock was going to be coaching the Columbus Blue Jackets in their his first season with the team, demanding a player to hand over his phone to go through his camera wall. I don't think that happened. If he did that, he is the most stupid person in the world, and I don't think he is. Perfect. At the same time, I don't think the information that Paul Bissonnette got is false. I, you know, they both admitted that they were going through each other's phones, but they, they, you know, they, they put it in a different context. I think when I think about it, this is something that a lot of, or I don't, I haven't heard anyone talk about it. Not that I'm smarter than anybody else, but let's think about this. For Bissonnette to get this information, And by the way, for people that say, well, you see, Boone Jenner uh, said it wasn't true. And this, folks, there's no Columbus Blue Jackets player who's going to come on the record and tell you that it's true, even if it was. Chances are no. Not your first impression with your coach. I would doubt it. Because a lot of people don't think that Mike Babcock's going to lose his job in his first year as coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets. If he was there for several years, yeah, you'd have a player who would probably come forward. But right away, I don't think so. So now Paul Bissonnette got this information and he got this information either one of two ways. Either the person who gave it to him is a Babcock hater and you're just trying to spread the hate. And he shared a text message from someone who said, hey, I heard this is happening in Columbus. Exactly. Or he got a text message following that as well from a Columbus Blue Jackets player or two, or three, or more. Well, you need sources and and you... Correct. So if that happened, it just goes to tell you this, that even though Babcock and Jenner are saying that it was all very, very innocent, it must have made a player or two uncomfortable. Obviously. Obviously. And it's it's awkward, though. eh? It's it's awkward. I I mean, I I just think he... Okay, we, we need context, and I don't know Mike Babcock. I know he's hated by a few players, but, I mean, 
probably Mike Babcock. And I mean, who am I to, to, to speak for him? But didn't even think that it was weird. Like the guy is married. But did, you probably... hear a great, did you ever hear a great player to say that they hate Mike Babcock? I did not. It's like John Tortorella. I mean, if, so, if there's so a who are if we there's a guy I who trust hates Mike Babcock. Fourth well, line Commodore, uh, that, yep, Thompson, well, yeah, probably. Yeah, you're right. Third you're pairing right. defenseman, and, fourth line players, and probably not getting same, a lot of ice time. It's the same with John Tortorella. I mean, if there's one person in the hockey world that I trust his you know, his intelligence and, and everything, it's Daniel Briere, right? Danny Briere. Yeah. And he, he kept him. So it, it, it's possible that hated coaches are like good coach and they're well liked or loved by other players. And it, it looks like it's, it's Danny Briere who must, be in a be, who must be in a better mood today than he was in the last couple of weeks yeah. because <laughs> Mishkov. Mishkov was loaded yeah. out to Sochi and uh, had yeah. two assists and was yeah. uh, 18 and a half minutes of play. And uh, mm-hmm. based on but, the reports that we're, that we're hearing and reading, uh, probably the best player on the ice for his team. So, uh, but I, I, I feel like he was playing for Scott. He wasn't even dressed. Let, let, come, come back to Babcock. I, I just don't think his generation understand how private a cell phone is how of a do you say secret garden in english yes you do it, it it's like your secret garden you have everything you can like i mean these guys are young studs millionaire good looking top shape and they, you know you know what i'm talking about so it, it's yeah. like a, a secret garden and some guys you know you can i mean your wife can send you a like a bikini picture and i mean so i don't think Babcock or, and I don't want to, you know, generalize, but I don't think people of that generation understand how of a secret garden a cell phone is. So let's, let's start with that. So was it a good idea? Obviously not. Did he have bad intention? He would have to be so stupid to do that with bad intentions with, with his past. That's first. Second of all, I really think it's, so important, so good, so refreshing to have podcasts and have former players like Paul Bissonnet, Ryan Whitney having a podcast. But this story is another proof of journalists are still important. Because you, I mean, maybe I'm missing stuff and obviously maybe he didn't said you know confirm all of his sources but from the text message message he, he showed on social media i would have never showed that, that text message by the way i wouldn't have because it me, shows that it didn't come from within the room it, but it, it if, shows that it came from someone who's a babcock yeah, hater of course and, and this text message doesn't tell me it doesn't say anything so he, the first thing you have to do, and journalist, and I don't want to make a you know a course of journalist, but you, you need never divulge sources. Them. Yes, and you never divulge them. Of course not. So what was it to actually call? Like I'm, I'm sure his, like his cell phone is full of Columbus player. You call one, and then you just confirm, or you, and then you go on there and you, you do your show, but you have to say that Mathieu Joseph, Boom Jenner. Uh, Godreau and probably a, a lot of other players are, are cool with that and they give you like what happened, the context. So, because I mean, I, I've shown pictures uh, to, to my boss of my, my family, my kids, and I'm very proud of it. I'm happy with it. I have nothing to hide, but maybe some do. Maybe for some people, it's more of a secret garden and I, I, I get it. But I, I think I think you said something before. I think you hit the nail on the head and that Babcock has always been very well spoken, very oh, articulated, yeah. very articulate, uh, very good communicator. But in your ways of communicating, as people evolve and as generations change, your approach towards a certain generation or certain people. It can't always be the same approach 
The lines that you used to use can always be the same lines. The things that you start up as conversation, as time has gone on, this generation, they're not into the stuff that other generations before them used to be into. And, and it takes other stuff to make them click or to get to them. And I don't think he's been able to evolve in that fashion. And that's what I think hurts him a lot. That and he's yeah. got haters who are very outspoken in the media. Mike Commodore being the biggest one. He's been going at it for years. Yeah. Paul B. And, you know, the one thing that Babcock has going for him is there hasn't been a star player, at least not to my knowledge, and I could be wrong. You let me know if anyone did. I don't think there's been a star, a star player who's come out and said, this guy's a fraud, this guy's mm -hmm. bad, this guy's not good, this guy's this. Well, maybe Mitch that. Marner. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, but, but the, the thing is, from the outside, I, I can't believe that his time away from the NHL, like he didn't think of, you know, he didn't like uh, took care. Uh, you have to reinvent yourself. Yeah, and I, I can't believe he did not do that. So I, I just can't believe that he had bad intentions. And I just, again, I'm repeating myself. I just think he doesn't understand the importance of a cell phone and the secret garden yeah. that it represents that's first but again uh it, it was not a journalistic work and there was uh no context there was no like second source there was i mean that i know yeah. and but context is so important in a story like that and, and a high and no high-end journalist has come out to say after looking into it with our sources, Paul was right. No one has and done that. Maybe he is. Maybe he is. But it's like a, a big explosion and we are missing facts, missing, con well, not anymore, not missing context anymore. But yeah. I mean, the players were like, no, it, it was super cool. It was nice. He was trying to get to know me and same. So, I mean, there, there's a big difference between like the yeah. guy who wanted my cell phone and show pictures on his uh, on his big screen compared to, yeah, it was very nice. He was asking, you know, about my family, my wife, my kids. He wanted to get to know me. It was very nice. So it's like it's two worlds. So how many yeah. pictures of me do you have in your cell phone exactly? A lot. Well, a lot. and you know what I like about you in terms of your communication skills is that uh, you know what gets to me because the second I said hello to you, give or take about 50 minutes ago or 45 minutes ago, uh, you came on and said, how are you beautiful? And uh, you know course. that that, uh, that oh. is always a way to get to me uh, because it makes me realize that you have a very good eye for beauty. <laughs> well, you I never uh, you never pass by my house to pick up your uh, case of uh, 12. I'm not even tipsy. Oh, man, I have to. Well, you know what? When are you back? When are I'm you back? back on Sunday. Sunday. Next week, yeah. it's a date. Okay. It's a date next week. Okay. It's a date. Yeah, we'll it's do that, my friend. Thank you so much for doing this. And my uh, pleasure. I, yeah, okay, very, very much. There you have it. Marc Andre Perot from TVA Spa. Merci beaucoup, mon chum. Uh, Marinero, not in my regular surroundings. Once again, uh, live uh, from Portugal. Uh, mind you, we're not really live. I've, I've recorded this just a couple of hours before, uh, but it is uh, very, very late here right now. Uh, and. Uh, and uh, I, I miss my water bottle, you know. Uh, yeah. One spritz, two spruits. So let's pretend. Uh, so no. So for those of you who didn't see me on Monday night and on Tuesday night, uh, I did not quit. I did not get fired. And uh, no, none of that. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be with the sick podcast for, uh, I would hope to be, a very, very long time. Those are the discussions that we're having. We're headed in that direction. And uh, when I made the move about a year and a half ago, uh, that was it. That was the goal that uh, we were going to go all the way with this. And, uh, you know, we uh, we haven't changed our minds. 
So uh, once again, maybe Matt O'Han will be in over the next couple of days or maybe even Shane Gaumont, or maybe I might even check in again. What I can tell you uh, is the plan is that I will um, I will be back in my uh, regular surroundings and home podcast studio back again on Monday, and I look forward to doing that. Once again, follow us on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. It's absolutely free. We're growing each and every day. Check us out on Twitter at the Sick Podcast. And if you're watching right now uh, on YouTube and you like it, comment Sick S I C K S I C K S I C K. And if you're going to listen to us on Apple or Spotify, leave us a five star review. It's our way of feeling the love. For Shane Gomon at Master Control, live from Portugal, it's the Sick Podcast with Tony Marinaro. That's me. I'm Marinaro. <laughs> And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow The Sick Podcast with Tony Marinero on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. The Sick Podcast is brought to you by Energy Transportation Group. Driven to be different. La Vida TV. Embrace your true nature. And Playground, your premier gaming destination. <laughs>